Star Trek, the original <sighs> series, was great, but it varied in terms of quality. For every episode that brought up great themes and an epic scale, there were just as many episodes that belied the shoddy TV production of the 1960s. To me, Trek reached its apotheosis when it was relaunched as a feature film series in 1979, starting with the motion picture. As we speak, there's a new installment in theaters, and it's fine, but it's not Trek. It's not what Trek could be at its greatest height. Star Trek Beyond isn't a bad film. It makes sense, it's visually coherent, it, it resolves every plot thread it opens, and the characters behave more or less on model but it doesn't use science fiction to comment on the world that we live in today. Now a caveat here of course is that there are no films which comment on or interrogate the world we live in. We live in the land of peak TV. Simon Pegg and Doug Jung's workmanlike script sets up a box that the bad guy wants. The bad guy gets the box and the Enterprise gets it back from the bad guy. Simple enough, it's an adventure. But that's all it is. Now the J.J. Abrams versions had to get the casting right and they did. They have the correct actors, but all the three movies have given us so far are revenge plots by alien goons looking for doomsday devices, which, as I say, it sounds very original series. The best Trek was about the relationship between Kirk, Spock, and McCoy, and it had that foremost on its mind. There were bad guys, there were adventures, but all those things were just backdrop for the vicissitudes of our leads. After the stunning motion picture, which begins with the Troika wandering without purpose and ends with the concretization of their middle-aged family unit, the stakes are upped with Spock's sacrifice at the end of Wrath of Khan. Khan is the start of a discrete trilogy within the Trek mythos that leads directly into the melancholy search for Spock and ends with the exultant The Voyage Home. Whereas the motion picture went for the grandiose, the next three films focused on intimate character relationships. Uh, Kirk mourns the loss of his son and his Vulcan brother. Uh, Spock foist his disconnected psyche on Dr. McCoy. They reunite Spock's brain with his regenerated body. And the uh, reconstituted crew travel back in time to save Earth from its own short-sightedness. Four films into the Trek saga, and we've covered a lot of emotional ground because we've used the earned credibility of these middle-aged actors and all the time that we've invested with them. There was enough subtext amongst the bridge crew to furnish all the tension of Trek, something not happening aboard the new NCC-1701. Now what you're listening to isn't the deluded ramble of a middle-aged man who's been pushed out of his sandbox. I've been served a number of different Trek options and I've liked some and not others. I'm not afraid of the new simply because it's new. I'm unfulfilled by the new Trek because it's not up to its own scratch. So in summation, in conclusion, maybe we could just, for starters, prevent the Beastie Boys from boldly going where no one has gone before? <laughs>